Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to LA Word Devotional. I'm glad that you have taken your time just to spend with me and just looking into God's truth. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a study, if you just started with us, we're doing a study uh, called Knowing the Father's Voice. It's based on the Gospel of John chapter 10, the shepherd and his flock. And uh, what, what we're doing is we're, we're basically doing, doing an inductive Bible study. We're dissecting words and phrases verse by verse, but also looking at God's truth and how it pertains and how it applies to our lives. Now, uh, we'll be doing this probably for the next couple days, maybe another week or so. It just depends because I do about every... Uh, every time we do a session is about three to four verses. So uh, just bear with me. And we're going to pick up in verse 11 and uh, we're going to go through verse 13. I'm going to read it all the way through. And then we're going to come back and we're going to unpack a lot of content in verse 11. And then we're going to go forth from there. And so it says this. Um, Jesus is speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has hired his hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. All right, let's do a little bit of a identification first and foremost. If you will, if you look back in verse 3, it says, The watchman opens the gate for him. All right, the person identified here as the watchman, or in other words, the porter, is John the Baptist, okay? And his aim was to open the door to, to, to lead the way for Jesus Christ as he was coming, okay? And his relationship, I'm sorry, his relationship to the sheep is to care for them. Now, of course, by now you guys know who the shepherd is, and of course, it's Jesus Christ himself, and his aim was to lead, verse 3, to feed, verse 9, and to give life for the sheep, which is found in verses 11, 15, and 17. And his relationship to the sheep is that he's the owner of the sheep, okay? Then we look at the thief and robber that we've talked about here uh, throughout the last 11, 10 verses or so. And it pertains to the Pharisees and the Jews. And their aim, when verse 10, was to, to steal and to kill. And the relationship to the sheep is they were, they were rustlers. They wanted to take the sheep. Okay. Then we look into uh, verses 12 and verses 13, and we see the wolf. Now, the wolf is, is Satan himself. Okay. The wolf is Satan, and his aim, of course, is to destroy that's all he wants to do. And relationship to the sheep is that he is their enemy. Now, if you looked at the hired person, the hireling, the uh, however it's phrased, um, this is the hired hand, verse 12. Okay, the hired hand is pertaining to the priest or the Levites of that day. Okay, and their aim it was very self uh, self interest. They were indifferent towards the sheep. If you look at verse 13. And the relationship to the sheep was they were supposed to be the legal guardians of their sheep. Now, if you look at verses 11 and you look at verses 14, Jesus mentions twice that he is the good shepherd, right? That he is a good shepherd. Now, the word good is the classical Greek word for kalos, all right? And what that means is morally good. It's beautiful. It's useful. It's noble. It's wholesome. It's, um, it's complete. And this is what Jesus was trying to get across, that he was the good shepherd. Now, four times, Jesus speaks about laying down his life for his sheep. We look in verses 11, 15, 17, and 18. And in these four verses, these four times that he claims that he is the good shepherd, and he's laying down his life for the sheep, we're going to unpack of what that technically looks like and what that means. Now, when he says he's laying down his life for the sheep, there are three pictures of Jesus that we see. In verse 11, we see that he is the good shepherd, okay? Gospel of John, verse 11. And that's talking about when he's laying down his life for the sheep, that's talking about his death, okay? It's talking about his death, and that parallels to Psalm 22. The other picture that we see of a shepherd 
uh, of Jesus is that he's the great shepherd. And that's found in Hebrews 13, verse 20. And that's talking about his resurrection. And then it parallels to Psalm 23. The third picture that we see of Jesus is that he is called the chief shepherd. And it's found in 1 Peter, verse 5, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, and it's talking about him coming back to reign. It's talking about his second coming, and that parallels to Psalm 24. Now, if you notice, verse 11 and verse 14, he's doing the, 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 phase, uh, the phrase again, uh, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. If you look at the word lays, that word translates to huper. Um, H-U-P-E-R, and basically it means on behalf. Uh, it's describing the substitutional nature of his sacrificial death. Basically what that means is he voluntarily sacrificed himself. He took, uh, he was a substitute for our sin. He was free from sin, but became sin. If you look at 2 Corinthians 5.21, and he was a sacrifice for sin. Second of all, it was a voluntarily sacrifice. Jesus was in complete and utterly control. He had, power, he had power and authority to lay down his own life. Okay? But what I also want to continue to do is I want to look at verses 12 through 13 because there's a, there's a video that I want you to watch after this. It's a Looney Tune video. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Looney Tunes, it was a sheepdog and Wiley, uh, Wiley Coyote. Um, and I want to read, I want to read this passage and I'm going to explain that real quick and then I want to let you guys watch. It says, The hired hen is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Again, remember the hired hand were the priest and the Levites. Okay? You know, how this pertains to us, Satan constantly attacks us. Whether it be your relationships, your spouse, your friends, uh, your job situation at work, or just different life situations. And Satan's not going to stop attacking you. Okay? He's not going to stop attacking you, and that will never stop until Jesus comes back again and he reigns and he takes us with us. So we're constantly bombarded. You know, matter of fact, Earth is basically it's a battleground, is what it is. It's not a playground, it's a battleground. Okay? And in the video, you're going to see that Willie Wiley Coyote constantly goes after the sheep. But you'll also notice the sheepdog constantly is on watch of the sheep protects the sheep just it's, it's it's a snippet it's just a snippet of a picture of what Christ does for us because if you look back at verse 11 I'm the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep Jesus is constantly there for us protecting us caring for us loving for us providing for us watching over us so when those attacks come we cling to Jesus because there's victory in him because he's already defeated Satan he's already conquered Satan folks this is this is LA word devotional and uh, may you just be encouraged and may you be blessed as you unpack as you go back over and look at verses 11 and 13 and kind of reflect on the passages of who the Good Shepherd is uh, who the wolf is and how this pertains to our own life and what you're dealing with right now. May God's truth speak to your heart. Until next time, God bless. Thank you very much.